Welcome to the Pro-Life Team Podcast. I'm here with Sylvia, and we're going to talk about how you can help those who have experienced healing from abortion go further and go higher and essentially be prepared to be servants in your ministry and in God's army. <laughs> awesome. So well said, sir. Can I use that intro one more? Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> Yes. I loved it. That was awesome. So, so Sylvia, I am so glad that you are here. And I would like you to introduce yourself as if you were talking to a small group of executive directors of pregnancy clinics. Okay. Well, thank you so much for uh, inviting me, Jacob. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Sylvia Blakely, and I am the founder of Arise Daughter. Dot org and the Rise Daughter is designed to help women and men who have come through a level of healing to receive even more healing, training, and then service opportunities for them to go out and work for the kingdom of God. Well, if I could share a little bit of my story, that might help a little bit. Sure. Okay. Oh, okay. I had gone through a curriculum called Forgiven and uh, Set Free, and it was amazing. It was nine weeks of really, really grueling work. Uh, looking at myself, looking at my abortion story and all of the factors that led up to it. And when I finished that nine weeks, I could not let my team go. Um, I was one of three other participants and had three uh, team leaders. And um, I just felt like I was in community with them. We shared so much. Uh, We'd been through so much. And so I wanted to stay in touch with them. And so I kind of co-opted them into a group me page. And so I just kept in touch with them and let it, you know, kind of let them know what my what my new goals were and things that I hadn't quite accomplished yet. And um, so they were gracious enough to stay in touch with me. And so I thought to myself, well, if I need a group like that, after going through something so intense, maybe other people could benefit from something like that. And so God began to nudge me toward creating a house. That's what he kind of termed it for me with many rooms. And uh, the rooms would be filled with women supportive of each other as we go through this next level of healing. Um, and possibly training and then being able to serve in the kingdom. So we had an opportunity to uh, start a website and um, got some support from a a, a current um, partner, uh, Divinely Driven Ministry. And so I was able to uh, just kind of launch and put it out there that we were available for women and men who had gone through a level of healing, but then didn't know what to do with their new freedom, right? I was running down the street with my hair on fire, so to speak, and I just kind of wanted to serve God in some way, but I didn't know how. And I know that there are thousands of of people out there just like me. Maybe some of them will be serving in your PRC, which is awesome, which is why some of them go through the healing process in the first place. But then some may come out and may want to do something totally different. You know, we're in a virtual world now. And so... Uh, healing opportunities are taking place all over the globe just with a, a click of a button, right? So Arise Daughter is a virtual healing um, community. We are a group of women right now who are just bonded together, not only through our post-abortion stories, but also through the healing and the community that it takes to continue to heal. And so that's what we get to offer to um, women and men as they come out of a healing program. We are a safe place. Uh, We meet once a month and we get a chance to really share uh, our stories. We get a chance to love up on each other and support each other as we go on to our next level of healing, training, and service. Okay. So what did you find? What did you find in your story when, after going through the first, you know, the the group, that, you know, that, that experience of finding healing from abortion, what did you find by having that extended experience with your group? Or how, how did that group continue continue down? Was it like you're finding greater healing or was it su- or support that was needed? Like how would you describe the, the benefits of going on further beyond that initial experience? Right, well, first of all, most programs uh, that are eight to nine weeks aren't really designed to continue to support Uh, the women and the men that come out of them because, you know, they have to kind of reboot, reset and move on. And so what I found that I needed was just that continued community um, 
sense of purpose, a sense of belonging that um, I was, I don't know if I could say afraid, but maybe it was a little bit of afraid to give up. Um, also, you know, when you give that much of your, uh, of your story to somebody, it's an entrusting thing. And, it, and it's something that you want to um, not easily walk away from, right? You've built relationships that, that mean something. And so having that continued relationship really meant something to me. That that makes a that makes a lot of sense because essentially you, you 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 know essentially you're known by those people who heard your story, and you're also the the, the person who knows them, and so that makes a lot of sense that there would be essentially room to continue a relationship more so than ending the relationship. How, how long does your does this concept go on for? Is it essentially like an ongoing relationship kind of piece, or does it also have an eight to nine week run in some mm. way. Right. Well, here's the thing. You know, I, I feel as if our um, our organization uh, should be poised to help continue to support that woman or man as long as they need to be supported. Um, each of our healing journeys is different. I know when I finished Forgiven and Set Free, uh, as as grueling as it was and as, as, as difficult as it was, I, there were still some milestones that I had not quite met when I got finished. And I, and I knew that because the program again was so uh, revealing of what really led up to my abortion that I needed to do some additional work, right? So each of us is gonna have a different journey that way. Some of us will come out completely healed and be ready for service right away. But some of us may need to dig a little bit deeper at some other roots, um, some other underlying issues that may have led to the abortion. Some of those issues could be sexual abuse, some could be codependency, we don't know sometimes until we finish a healing program like that, that's so intense and, and Holy Spirit is so gracious to reveal those additional things for us if we ask. So it may, you know, it may be a few months, it may be a year or so, we don't know, but we are ready to hold your hand and walk with you through that process. Okay. And so, so the goal, it seems like, so why, why was the goal picked for, to be ready for service or, um, and, and I guess it makes sense that one goal line might be to ad identify additional areas of healing. But how would you say the, the you know, being ready for service is that a is that like a calling that you essentially maybe it's being being ready to answer the calling that God has placed in someone's heart to do something, and then in which case you have to be prepared to do that. I suppose. Right, can you you speak, yeah, yeah. Can you speak speak to that? Like. What, what's the background or the side connections to being ready for service or what are the benefits of being ready for service? Yeah. Yeah. I think you just, you just hit the nail on the head, Jacob. You know, one thing God was very clear uh, about with me was that this was not going to be a club, right? We were not going to be a group that was just going to meet for meeting's sake. Okay. Uh, although our meetings are extremely refreshing. We call them refresh meetings as a matter of fact, because they are an opportunity for uh, you know, leaders of, of other abortion um, programs, um, PRCs, to just come and just be for a minute, you know, without an agenda necessarily, an area where you can just relax your soul and just uh, allow other women and men to speak life over you. But that being said, you know, God is always wanting more harvesters for the work that he has uh, for us to do. And this is a harvest field that we know if we really were at capacity, each and every one of our post-abortion uh, ministry um, programs would be overrun, right? With the millions and millions of women and men who are seeking healing from somewhere and don't know where to go. So, you know, we have to be ready to um, increase capacity. And that is part of, that is a huge part of uh, why we exist. So you mentioned that this is for, for men and as obviously for women, but also it's for men. Can you speak to how this program is, is it the same for men or is it uniquely different for men compared to women? Can you speak to that side of, of that, of, of that, of the abortion healing world or healing right. abortion world? I am learning more and more every day. I just attended a, a men's conference, uh, put on by support after abortion about how men heal differently, you know, how they heal the message uh, of shame and guilt differently, how they might need uh, each other's support in a different way. And so honestly, I am still learning. Um, I'm, I'm looking at um, hopefully being able to add a man mentor soon 
Um, but we don't know. We have to see who God walks, allows, you know, to walk through our doors. But we know it's going to look differently because we know men process this, uh, this, you know, this uh, uh, loss differently than women do. Um, is there a place for women and men to work together in this? I do believe so. I absolutely do believe so. I believe there's going to be some co-ed healing that's only going to happen um, amongst couples or amongst men and women who can, again, uh, give each other support in this. So you, when we first met, it was at, I think it was a Heartbeat conference or CareNet Care conference. CareNet, Care Care yes, CareNet. Yes. Care and I remember just like when we first met, I remember you having like this, um, I don't know if the word is aura, but like I could tell that you were like in, in, in conversation with God regularly. Like th there's just something about you that that says that. And so I want I want you to speak a little bit about how the Holy Spirit leads you or how you hear God's voice. Mm. You know, every morning, Jacob, this is just the strangest thing, but I wake up with a hymn singing over me. Now, I don't know if it happens to, to a lot of That's people, beautiful. but it's That's absolutely the truth. I wake up in the middle of a song, so I know it's not me singing, right? <laughs> and it'll, it'll be like, oh, okay, thank you, God, for you know, for keeping me tonight. And then I wake up, and I'm and and I'm often um, really driven at a certain time in the morning to get up and go do my devotion. My devotion time with Him is very, very precious to me, and I know if I delay it or if I don't do it that day. Whoo, not going to be a good day, right? So, you know, so we get to spend 45 minutes and an hour together with me reading, uh, with me listening, with me journaling, and with me praying and listening. And uh, that has just been so precious to me because um, that two-way communication has to be worked on. You know, he's always there. He's always speaking. Um, but if I don't take the time to stop and listen to what he's saying, um, I could miss it. And so when I'm in download mode like that, and sometimes it's right before I get up to go do my devotion, he just starts, I don't know, just dropping. I, it's just the strangest thing. It's almost like a computer update. It's like an update every morning. <laughs> I get like two to five huge, you know, uh, ideas in my head and I'll roll over and put them in my phone really quickly or, you know, make sure I put them in my journal somewhere, people to pray for, whatever it is. And, you know, obviously it's not me at three in the morning coming up with this stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's always good. It's always um, good news advancing. It's always kingdom building stuff. So it's, it's just, oh God, you know, are you going to give me the time to actually complete all this stuff? I don't know. And I, you know, but I try not to worry about that, you know, because he told me I was going to work at his tempo. And so when he's ready to do what he does, I'm trying to make myself available to be ready to receive what he has. Oh, that that is so amazing. So Sylvia, waking up into waking up to the middle to the song of being. So, do you think God is like essentially like the, the, does the experience feel like you're listening to a song and as you wake up you're in the middle of a song? It's almost as if you're being sung over. Is that can you describe what that sort of feels like? And because it seems like a really beautiful and just an amazing experience to go through. You know, Jacob, since I was probably three or four years old, I've always felt uh, God's presence. And it's often been through song. Um, I can remember being a little girl just sitting on my front stoop and uh, just crying when I'd hear a song in my head. And I didn't know where it came from. I didn't know why. But it was always something that was designed to speak to me and touch me. And so that's been, that's been something I've lived with uh, pretty much my whole life. Um, but it's been just, I think, since I've actually probably since I've started Arise Daughter that his insistency about letting me know that he's there for me uh, has grown. You know, um, ministry work is difficult. I'm finding that out, right? Uh, you know, to, to be able to stand in the gap for women who are healing and um, fight against the enemy who does not want this work done, you know, um, during the day. Uh, I think at night, he just wants to be able to bathe me in his love. And, you know, when you know when you're in his eye, you know, when you know when you have his favor, it's just, a, it's a feeling I can't, it's hard to describe otherwise, except for to tell people that if, if, if you can ask Holy Spirit to do it for you, please do. <laughs> because you, you, you just feel a love that is overwhelming. Mm. Just overwhelming. Like that today. So today is our first day. <laughs> 
And ever since I woke, uh, I woke up this morning, I just can't seem to contain my joy. It's just been the most amazing <laughs> day today. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That is so yeah. awesome. Um, okay, so this curriculum, this this abortion healing, continue, you know, the potentially allowing someone to continue on finding healing and help and care with their community. Is this, is there a price tag? Is it licensed? Is it free? How does, what does that look like for someone wants to adopt this into their clinic or center? So, you know, right now it's a process and it's something that we call a line. It's arise, live in God's newness. So it's a little bit of a play on our name, but it's a process that allows me as a mentor to sit down with someone who, again, is coming out of a healing program and looking at, we look at eight different domains, different areas that that person uh, has been placed in by God where they can be influential or they can be influenced by. And we talk about each of those domains individually and we look to see where God is already plugging them in. We also look to see where there's areas where they don't feel free where they can't talk about you know, their past and what's what led up to where they are right now. They also look at areas where they wanna be freer and who can they um, you know, kind of bring along as an ally in that, in that process. So it's, it, it really is just a one-on-one -on -one process right now. Um, and it is allowing people to see how God is connecting the dots in their life through this healing. Um, we sit down, it's about 90 minutes. And then we revisit it in about two weeks and we look at to see where God is moving. And quite often people have, you know, come to the realization that, hey, you know, I, I didn't tell my daughter because I was afraid, for example, that she might uh, reject me. And now Holy Spirit is saying it's time. I'm going to make an opportunity for you to have that important conversation. And then it happens. And then the world doesn't end. And then, you know, they find out their connections even closer than they than they expected. So it's been that kind of a just one-on-one, -on -one really um, intense mentoring time for us to just sit down and look at it, look at their life and see how this healing is going to further God's kingdom. Okay. So, and if a clinic wanted to use this um, to to help to help the women and men who are finding you know healing or have found healing and want to continue on. Would would they go through your group to do a virtual group or would you provide like the curriculum in some way so that they could use a local person to, is this sometimes done in person or is it always done virtually? What does that look like and how does that work? Right. So our ministry is 100% virtual at this point. Okay. But, um, so what we would do is we would partner with that um, PRC and say, hey, if you have somebody that you would like to refer to arisedaughter.org, please do. We will get together. Oftentimes I get referrals and then we meet on uh, like an email and then I'll you know, kind of meet with that person individually and we'll see where they are. Um, it, it may be something that is something they're not quite ready for. So we get to talk about that. It may be something that maybe they need to go uh, back to some fundamentals in terms of their healing. And we can talk about that and kind of get them referred back to maybe another program that would, would that would fit their healing uh, right away before they step into the next level. Um, we're talking about a subset of a subset of people, right? So this is the, these are people who have healed and want to move forward. Some people are healed and they're happy where they are, and that's okay. Um, but from your mouth to God's ears, that it may become a curriculum at some point, Jacob. That would be amazing, awesome. Uh, God has not called that out yet, but I could see that being a possibility, most definitely. But right oh, now, it's one-on-one -on -one referral. Yes. Okay, so so if someone if someone was called, if someone has a need, uh, and they live in a different state, they could connect to your group virtually. Yes. Um, how many spots do you have available for someone to connect to this, you know, this virtual group? Well, right now we have quite a few. I, I mean, I, I am the lead mentor right now. So I have, um, I'm retired, praise God, to do his work. So, you know, I make available probably a good 15 spots a week uh, for the one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So um, I have not been full yet. So I still have some capacity, but I am also in the process of training mentors. So I've got uh, 17 members who are being trained right now to become mentors. So 
we can do the math from there. Hopefully, you know, I, of course they won't be as, all of them won't be as available as I am, but we will definitely uh, be increasing our capacity this year to be able to accept because that one-on-one -on -one right now we're finding is really important. Group has been really, really good, again, for us to be able to just kind of share our, our general concerns, our, our overall labors, um, and ask for prayer for that. But that mentoring piece really, uh, I'm feeling, is going to be most beneficial one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, so so most of these, most of the, yes, most, most of them are one-on-one, -on -one, but do you have some that are small groups as well, or is it almost all one-on-one -on -one at this point? It's all one-on-one -on -one at this point. Again, okay. small groups is more our monthly refresh meetings. Oh, okay. um, and then we also have an artist collective, which we can talk about in a little bit. Okay. That's small um, groups. Well. So 17 people being trained to essentially be seven. available. Oh, seven. Seven. Oh, seven, <laughs> seven people being trained. Again, from your mouth to my God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so seven people. Um, so, if, so it sounds like there's room for this to grow. Uh, you know, essentially you're preparing for it. Even with 15 spots in your schedule available, you're still preparing people to, to also take on that leadership role of, or that, that guiding role of helping other people continue on with their healing process. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So there's really not like a curriculum per se. It sounds like it's almost a lot more like a, how would you describe how you're training those seven people or what are what resources or tools do they leverage or is it primarily their experience in a previous one-on-one -on -one along with your tutorship or guidance how would you describe well, that? i would say uh so far six out of the seven have led their own post-abortion recovery programs so they are quite experienced um and uh I think four have already been mentors in other capacities. So they come with a lot of experience already. Um, but what we're doing is we are putting together mentorship the Arise Daughter way. Uh, and so we're gonna be looking at specific characteristics of, of our mentors that um, are gonna make us unique. You know, we're gonna be available, we're gonna be responsible and resourceful, we're gonna be compassionate and caring, we're gonna be transparent, teachable ourselves, we're gonna be um, all of these things that will make us uh, look a little different, maybe, but uh, will definitely, men, you know, kind of meld into what most people traditionally think of as mentors. Okay, so so if a pregnancy clinic has a client in mind, and they probably have many clients in mind, they might, you know, be benefited or, you know, would like to be connected with this group. Would would they simply? How, how what would be the process or steps that they might do to provide a referral or to help them connect with a with a mentor? Well, first of all, I would say, you know, reach out to arisedaughter.org and start a chat with me. I think getting to know who I am a little bit more and kind of, you know, where I've come from and what the vision is for Arise Daughter, I think will definitely help to build a relationship between uh, the PRC and ourselves. I think that's really huge. You know, if you're if you are hoping to hand off, so to speak, I'll use that terminology, but hand off somebody who's been under your care. Um, I'm a nurse by training, and so um, it's very very typical for nurses between shifts to do what we call a handoff, right? And we've cared for that person for eight to twelve hours, and we've gotten to know them very very well. And before we hand them off to somebody. Uh, new to take care of them, we want to make sure that they understand what their needs are, you know, and I have to have a trust in that nurse that I know that they'll pick up the baton and, you know, go the next leg. So I would say, first of all, you know, get in touch with arisedaughter.org, have a conversation with me, see if my goals match your goals. That would be really, really important. And then we can begin to look at, hey, who, who that's been through your healing programs might want to move forward now? Because again, not everybody will. Everybody may be completely satisfied to have, you know, completed a program and work at that PRC. Perfect. Yay. That's exactly what, you know, what you might have hoped for. And that's exactly what you want to happen. But some may want to become sidewalk advocates. Some may want to become um, telephone advocates. And so maybe your center doesn't offer that. And we may have resources that we can connect them to when they feel that they're ready. And that's the next step is for us to help them see whether or not they're ready to move forward. Okay. That, I hope that makes some sense. <laughs> it does. And then it sounds actually that's a really important part, I think, because it, it highlights how 
it might be it may be the counselor or the person who works at the PRC um, who would hand off or help help guide a a person who's looking for you know ongoing healing um, into this space when they identify it as something that that person would desire or need. Exactly. Uh, we just oh, okay. had a beautiful handoff of a young lady who um, the agency that she was with, they were only designed to spend, you know, 45 minutes to an hour with her. And after that, you know, they knew she wanted to to serve somewhere, but they didn't they didn't have that capacity to help her figure out where that would be. And so um, now I have an opportunity to sit down with her one on one uh, an hour each week and just talk about. Uh, you know, what God is speaking into her life. And she's beginning to see some things that he's moving out of the way and some things he's moving into her life um, to help further the kingdom. So that's the way it's designed, you know, for, for another agency to say, hey, we don't have the capacity for this next step. Would you like to, you know, to partner with us as, as, as you bring this next person along a little bit? So an, an hour each week, that's a lot of, time um how how do you how do you compensate you know how how do you um sustain you know for being able to provide an hour each week to sounds like many people are getting an hour each week well i tell you if i were a counselor i suppose i'd probably be charging quite a bit of money (laughs) but i am not i am a mentor and and my calling is to do this work um, so we offer it for free. There's nothing that we offer at a life starter that uh, has a price tag attached to it. Um, so th- this is just my call. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And, um, you know, there, there's going to be a time, obviously, where um, they're not going to need that hour. They're going to spend that hour maybe training or reading something, some other material or, or you know, um, possibly listening to a podcast. Whatever it is they're going to need to help supplement, um, you know, what they want to do when they are ready to serve. So it's just me kind of getting them to that place to see what their next is really. And okay. that, you know, that may take a, maybe may take a month, may take a little bit longer of, of one-on-one that way, but we're going to be there for them. So, so it sounds like the seven uh, people who are being trained or following in your footsteps of doing this as like a calling or doing it for free and, you know, essentially are tr- probably, you know, are, you know, either have or are seeking a way to put macaroni and cheese on the table in some other form, like they're trying to. So this is this is a free service, even though obviously it's you know it, it sounds amazing and it doesn't sound free. It, it, it essentially it sounds like it's at someone's sacrifice or as someone's be acting as a servant. This you know this is provided through that heart. Yes, absolutely. And here's the thing, Jacob. Here's the thing. There are so many women. And I suspect a lot of men who want to do exactly this type of service for God. When you have been forgiven, when you have been set free, when you are able to walk in your true freedom, your true authenticity, to be truly transparent about um, your past, and not only that, but what God has done to heal that past, you would be surprised how many people are hiding under the pew right now who want to come out and serve in this capacity or something very closely like it. Um, you know, there are lots of other things we could do with our freedom, but trust and believe this is one thing we want to do to give back to God and to honor him for what he's done for us. Yeah, that that does make sense. Yeah, and so essentially it sounds like, yeah, it, Finding finding that desire through the forgiveness provided, uh, find that desire to offer others to find you know that same beauty through forgiveness and helping them get to that same that same place. Um, wow. So let me think. What's, so when it comes to a pregnancy clinic team them them understanding what this is help them under you know them knowing that it's available and them understanding how maybe how could you explain how they might identify a a person who would desire or need this like what question might they ask or what might that person say or do that would represent them wanting a um a um 
this ongoing healing opportunity. Yeah, it's kind of like that discipleship, right? It, it, it looks sort of like discipleship in that you're going to notice that that woman or man is faithful, that they are, that they are faithful, that they're available, uh, that they're teachable, that they're hungry, um, you know, that they want to um, interact with God's kingdom and, and put themselves out there. I mean, this, this is, you know, we're in a war zone. Uh, obviously, the lines have been drawn, right, between uh, life and death. And so if you want to enter into uh, the war zone, you have to be battle ready. So, you know, who are, who are the people that are coming out of your program who look battle tested? You know, they've come through this fire of healing. And trust me, it is a fire. And they come out and they're still flaming, but in the best way for God. You know, um, these people are hungry. Um, they're not shrink. They're not those shrinking violets. These are the ones that want to get out there and say, God, use me. Here I am. So, and again, that's going to be a subset of a subset, right? We're not talking about everybody that exits your program. We're talking about a faithful few that are going to want to serve uh, openly um, with, you know, with that bullseye in their chest. Say, I'm, I'm pro-life, I stand, and I'm going to speak. Wow. It, it, it sounds like you're, you're taking someone from, from, you know, who has found healing at some level, and you're essentially sort of taking them through, like, the armament of God to, like, equip, to, to be able to, like, you know, to... Uh, you know, to, to get a shield and to get a, to get to get a breastplate and a belt and these boots and and the helmet and all of these pieces on, so they can go and fight um, and act. It, it feels like you're you're helping them, yeah, equip. <laughs> exactly, and that's the beauty of my partner, uh, Divinely Driven Ministry. They are uh, a ministry that's geared directly to discipleship. And so if, a, if somebody comes out and they're not quite battle ready and they want to know how to um, enter in devotion time with God or how to study his word deeper, you know, I can say, hey, listen, here's a group that's ready to take you on and will help you become better, um, uh, better ambassadors for Christ so that you can feel like you're armored up to enter into this work. Um, if you've got that layer and foundation already ready, then let's go. You know, where else do you see yourself? Have you identified some other um, you know, issues maybe in your past that you need healing for. Um, I've been through three other healing programs since I first did Forgiven and Set Free. Now, we're just talking since April <laughs> of 2020. That was when I finished that program. Um, because God revealed to me there were some other things that I needed to, to really look into and to tap into. You know, he doesn't want to leave any healing on the table for us. We just have to be courageous to pick it up. And so, you know, that's 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 the fire that I've walked through, and that's the fire I want to help others walk through when they're ready. When they're ready. How does how, how does a rise daughter connect with um, churches and people who are, you know, what, what does that look like for someone who's going through a rise daughter? Is are they usually connected with a church already, or or is the PRC taking someone and helping them? you know, find healing and then do they help, are they helping them connect with the church and then they find Arias Daughter? Like, how does the church interact with the Arias Daughter experience and process? Well, let me, let me, let me put this uh, out there this way. How could the church interact with Arias Daughter? I feel as if um, the sins that we don't speak in church are the ones that we don't address. And so if, if your church does not have a compassion ministry, a compassion pastor, if they are not uh, addressing issues of uh, abortion or miscarriage, stillbirth, any reproductive loss. Um, and, and I've talked to pastors who said, you know, those are sticky wickets for them. They're very nervous about bringing some of those issues up because they're afraid of alienating a lot of their congregation. So if they're ready to, to do that, um, identification of the sin and then the compassion for the sin, then I think it's a time uh, where, again, we can start coaxing people out from under the pews to say, it's okay. Um, we love you no matter what your past is. Um, here's an organization that can help you with healing. Um, most, but I won't say most, but a lot of large churches are connected to a PRC in some way. So that is usually the route I think most churches would take. Um, and a lot of the PRCs have an abortion recovery program. 
So once they enter into the PRC through that network, and then they enter into the healing program uh, that the PRC has, then from there, I think would be probably the best way or probably the most um, influential and resourceful way to connect with a rise daughter. So would someone normally um, go through a PRC abortion healing group before connecting with a rise daughter or might somebody start at a rise daughter? Somebody could start at a rise daughter and we've had a lot of people visit the site who are looking just for that very first healing program. We are blessed through Say One to be able to offer a five day self study. And um, it's beautiful because I can email that particular person who wants to just do maybe a, an at home study. Maybe they're not a group person, or maybe they're not quite ready to uh, share with, with other people what their past has been. They can use this five day self study to explore, begin exploring the issues around their abortion and um, where they might need some additional healing. It's not meant to be the end, it's just meant to be the beginning. From there, then they can go into a, a deeper study if they choose to, or a retreat, something like that. There's lots of different options for people. Again, it just kind of depends on where they're coming from and uh, what suits their needs best. We are um, doing our best to meet people where they are, Jacob. We don't want to say, well, if you're not Christian, we don't serve you. Uh, if you don't walk with God in this way, we don't serve you. Um, if you're just raw from your abortion, we don't serve you. We want to be able to be able uh, to have an open hand for everybody. Now, we won't be able to service everybody um, in the deeper way until they've gone through some healing. So there are lots of options. Interesting. So if someone believes in Jesus versus someone not knowing Jesus yet, how does that affect that process and what they might receive through, you know, signing up and starting this process with with an Arise Daughter counselor or you? Mm. There are a couple of programs out there, uh, Jacob, that uh, take you through healing that does not have a biblical base to it. I have access to those resources. If a person's completely adamant that maybe they've been church hurt, they do not want a biblically based healing program, there are some out there. Um, but you and I know, that healing is going to come through the love of Christ. And so a lot of times, eventually, people may start non-biblically based, but then they recognize, um, you know, for true forgiveness and true healing, mm. um, that, you know, Christ is at the center of that. Um, but not everybody is going to get there, I'm quite sure. Um, not everybody's called, so we know that. But that doesn't mean that I don't want to see them healed in some way. I would love for them to be able to hear the love of Christ, So. And I think I'm going to do that better by showing them that love um, at that point, if they're not quite ready to hear the word. Yeah. And I can imagine someone who, who knows who knows Christ um, feeling just that burden of, of their sin and thinking that, you know, there's no forgiveness for me and I'm gonna, I want the secular option. But, you know, they essentially, you know, but encouraging them or making it available to them um, is probably the right speed for that for them to accept it. Uh, yeah. by just making it available. Um, so tell me about how does the art play in? Is it is it through creating art? What, how does this how does this connect as part of this process? So when Arise Daughter started, uh, God asked me to build out two rooms initially. One was Arise Advocates, and that was uh, for women and men who would be ready to speak out pro-life issues. And the other one was Arise Artists. And I thought to myself, hmm, that's interesting. What, what are we going to do with that? <laughs> so um, just so happens, you know, there's no coincidences in the kingdom, right? I happened to meet a, a, a woman who ran a, 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 a um, PRC post-abortion uh, recovery. And she said to me, Sylvia, I am extremely interested in this artist piece. Are we using art to, to, to look at our trauma? And I said, hmm. Well, why don't we do that? Let's let's do that. And so um, we began to bring together women who are um, post-supportive, who also have a creative side and wanted to explore that and use that to help them uh, really examine their trauma. So we've had, um, oh gosh, nine, I guess nine Arise Artists meetings since we got started. Uh, we did a beautiful one on mask making. And this was, you know, participated in by women who'd never picked up an a ink pad before, I'm sure, to draw anything. 
but we created masks and the masks were meant to show us how we can hide um, you know, our hurt, our pain, our shame and our guilt and what it looks like when God removes that mask. And so it was, it was an hour and a half of creating and laughing, but uh, really understanding that God has um, uh, a work for us to do to help pull that mask off. You know, all the things that we tell each other and tell ourselves about, um, you know, why we don't feel any pain after the abortion or why we can't be forgiven after the abortion was addressed in that particular exercise, 90 powerful, powerful minutes. And so we do that kind of thing uh, each month. We come together around a theme and then we just explore that. We've had poetry jams uh, where we've you know, either written or recited poetry. Um, so it's, it's been a beautiful way for us to just use the arts, the creative arts, to look not only at our own pain, but now to use it as a voice, an advocate's voice for pro-life issues. Um, and that's where we're going with this uh, next year's uh, Arise Artists mandate. God is asking us to meld the advocacy and the art in a way that we can use our art to speak life um, over men and women who are maybe confused, frightened, uh, unprepared for, um, for parenthood. And I don't know what that's going to look like yet, so I can't tell you the end, the end version of that. I just know that that's our mandate for 2022. Yeah, and I, and I feel like uh, so my, my church uses... Um, uh, artistic, you know, um, creating art or, you know, whether it's watercolor or songwriting or, or possibly even, you know, coding on a, uh, you know, web website coding could be considered, you know, an artistic form, but most of it's, mm -hmm. most of it's, um, you know, painting and songwriting or song, you know, playing music. And essentially they consider that to be like a way to worship Jesus. It's like, a, it's like an expression or a form of, of exercising our worship towards 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 God, and I feel like you're embracing that in a really awesome way of you know helping someone express that hard to express thought or idea of you know, of healing and ex their experience with God uh, or what they've gone through, and I think that's just a really beautiful way for someone to create something that can then, you know, a conversation could be stirred around it. And and then it could be, you know, a, a way to almost break the ice on some hard things to try and convey. Yeah, uh, I, agree. I agree. And um, so this is, yeah, wow, this is, a, and, so, um, and so this is a brand new program. So tell me, when did this start? I mean, you said 2020, is that right? Is that the beginning of this, <laughs> of this new journey? <laughs> Exactly. I yeah. I, I completed my my forgiven and set free program in April, and he began to speak to me almost immediately. Uh, partnered with, uh, like I said, my my main partner is Divinely Driven Ministry. Um, they were underwriting me, and I, you know, kind of stepped out in faith and went to a couple of the support after abortion conferences and took uh, a whole notebook full of notes and just started contacting people. And that's how I met uh, a lot of the members that are part of our group now. A couple of old friends, one's a family member who had never heard my story. And when I shared my abortion story with her, she shared hers with me. I never knew. Oh. So it was an opportunity for us to bond in a completely different way. Now she's, you know, our artist in residence. So it's just been an amazing, amazing journey. Um, just reaching out to people, um, making friends, making um, new mentors. Um, being able to begin to go to different conferences, like where I met you, uh, that was a complete God thing. Uh, I was not at all meant to be at, at Carinette, if you would look at it in the natural. <laughs> but in the spiritual, God had a, a uh, amazing plan for me there. And so I, I've met a, a coach uh, that I now have, an executive coach, and, and you um, helping me with my website design and and uh, helping us promote a rise daughter this way. I've been so grateful for the people that God has brought into my life in this short amount of time. He has his eye on us and he means for us to do the work that he's asked us to do. So um, he's asking us to lay different foundations for different rooms and, and we are getting busy. Awesome. And I, there's so much, I, I, I feel like I sort of want to know like where this journey is taking you because I feel like you're at the beginning and there's going to be so many beautiful landmarks coming down the road. And so it's going to be exciting to sort of see, you know, where this where this continues on. It's going to be really cool to hear, amazing to hear about the next things that come up and then where God takes you from there. Yes. Um, 
And so I really appreciate you sharing your story and for you listening to God's direction on this because, yeah, I, I can't even imagine how many women are going to be blessed by the effort and work that you're doing. It, it just seems like a very large, it's, it's a beautiful opportunity for people to find healing. And that's just a wonderful, amazing story. Um, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for helping. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Jacob, for um, putting our little unicorn uh, organization out there on the map for um, for people to to, to grasp onto a whole nother level of, of healing that God does not want us to leave behind. And I just, I'm, I'm praying that I can partner with a lot of the people that listen to your podcast um, so that again, we can build this army that he needs for us to build up so that we can fight back against the darkness. Yeah. And I can imagine you empowering a volunteer um, at a PRC to essentially to help sort of be like that local person who would help um help serve the, the 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 growing population of people seeking ongoing healing out of that subset of a subset but yet still trying to um essentially embracing and supporting those who want to go further who want to to go higher and get stronger and be better equipped to serve and to um and, and to be used by God. And essentially, it sounds a lot like discipleship prep <laughs> or, <laughs> or like a sister of discipleship. I'm not sure how you would say it, but. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's exactly. It's, it's a it's a model that I hope is replicated. Um, and it doesn't have to say a rise daughter. Obviously, it could be whatever God tells you. It should be, I think a rise daughter is a beautiful name, though. I, I feel like that the word arise has such energy behind it. And daughter just speaks of you know, of who you're helping. I, I guess for men, it might be nice to have it be a rise son or something, but a rise daughter is definitely a, a really, really good name for, for the, for the female audience. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Again, from your mouth, the guy's a rise son may be showing up soon. <laughs> that, that would make sense. For, I mean, cause I, I don't think a guy is going to want to be in the, in the, the arise daughter. daughter right. <laughs> <laughs> the formula. Exactly. <laughs> I really appreciate your time, Sylvia, and I will look forward to doing a follow-up one with you someday because this is this is so exciting. Um, this is really, really fun, like how you're taking someone to that next level. I just love, that's just an amazing vision. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm working with this young lady right now, Jacob. I'm telling you, she's going to be a voice for her generation. I just know it. And... Uh, you know, you're, you can, yeah, you're helping leaders uh, yes. find find their voice. Yes. Yes. Praise God. And to him be the glory. I just don't yes. even know. Like I said, my mind is already blown and we've been in this exactly 12 months. So I cannot tell you how excited I am for the next 12. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> let's schedule. Let's schedule another one. November 1st, 2022. <laughs> Well, or maybe sooner, but yeah, whenever you want, that's fine. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. Let me, let me know. I usually do them on Mondays. Sorry about today. I was, I've been running no, sort of, been running no. behind, but yeah. Okay. No, I had my makeup on. I just got my new Warby Parker glasses. So you're, you know, your <laughs> audience is the first ones to see them. They're really kind of jazzy. I like them a lot. <laughs> cool, I'm cool. Ready. I'm ready. What, what, what perfect way for me to cap off our first birthday? Oh, <laughs> oh, is it really 12 months from today? Is that the, yeah. oh, I did not know that. It's yeah. so amazing. <laughs> so it November 1st, 2020. 2020. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh my goodness. Awesome. Oh.